Hi everyone, welcome to Man with Demon. Please don't forget to subscribe, enjoy the video. In the previous part of this video we have seen that how Belle helps her to get divorced and become the Empress. Binus starts begging her to not leave. The story continues as Binus said, My queen, no, your imperial majesty, I'm on my knees begging you. He starts crying and said, Please stay in Duran for a little while longer. Arnoa said with a weird face, You sicken me? Binus said, Forgive me, your imperial majesty. Oh right. The feast I've prepared just for you. Arnoa thoughts, That was supposed to be a divorce ceremony. She thoughts, Maybe I should hear him out. Binus said, I have gathered the finest chefs and dancers in Duran, he shouts, being her something. Anything. He said to Arnoa, As for the head chef, his family has been working for Duranian family for generations. She interrupts him, saying, Really? She said, I don't recall him cooking for me when I was a Duranian royal family member. Binus gets shocked hearing this and starts sweating. He said, That's. She said, You can keep your precious chef and his dishes. Arnoa asked him, So, are you going to marry Larissa now? Binus gets nervous and said, It's a misunderstanding, Your Imperial Majesty. She said, Oh? Binus starts mumbling and said, I thought the woman was pregnant with my child and as a man, I felt responsible, so. Arnoa thinks, Ugh, his blabbering like an idiot. I should have just left. She said, You always had a great sense of responsibility toward your mistress. She said, If only you treated your queen the same way. Hearing this he gets shocked. He said, I was tricked. Binus shouts, Larissa and the court physician both lied to me about her pregnancy. He glanced and said, If it weren't for those two, our marriage would have flourished. He pointing his finger towards Larissa shouts, You. He shouts in anger, Kneel before the Empress. Arnoa seeing this thought, Wow, how petty. He was acting like he would love her until the end of the world. But it didn't take him long to offer me his first love as a scapegoat. Larissa gets shocked and asked, Your Majesty, how could you? He grabs her arm and shout, You dare talk back to me? Binus said him angrily, Shut up and kneel. Larissa kneeled down in front of Arnoa. Arnoa said, This is pathetic. Stop. Binus interrupts her saying, If it weren't for her, we would have become the couple of the century. He said, After seeing your imperial majesty, gazing into the eyes of the master of the enchanted tower. He starts crying and said, I realize that I have been in love with your imperial majesty. I was jealous because you imperial majesty, who was my wife at the time, was with another man. Arnoa gets angry hearing this and said, You must have gone mad. Binus trying to hold her hand said, Your imperial majesty, no, my beloved Arnoa Duran. He tries to kiss her hand and asked, Will you marry me once more? She pulls her hand back and said, No. Binus said, Give it some consideration, your imperial majesty. You have no experience in ruling. He said, In this cutthroat world of politics, a naive soul like your imperial majesty will get tricked in the blink of an eye and lose everything. Arnoa asked, Ha! A naive soul, you say? She thoughts, Didn't he call me mad a few days ago? Binus said, on the other hand, I have been ruling as a king for years now. A veteran ruler like me can see right through people just by looking at their faces. I believe your imperial majesty needs a person like me. He said, if you could look past our differences and find generosity in your heart, she interrupts saying, do you take me for a fool? Arnoa said, you becoming the king of Duran is a tragedy, both for me and the people of Duran. She asked him, also for someone with such great insight, don't you think you left yourself be tricked too easily? He gets nervous and said that's. Binus clenched his hand and said, that's because it didn't cross my mind that a court physician would lie to me. I have stripped her of her title for making fools out of both of us. Arnoa said, I'm glad you did. He gets happy hearing this. He asked, I did good, yes? Arnoa said, I'm taking Dr. Ludes to the Empire with me. His happiness suddenly gone and he asked nervously, I beg your pardon? She smiled and said, like you said, a naive soul like me could use the help of wise people. 
Anoa standing from her chair said, If she tricked someone as insightful as you, she must be quite brilliant. Anyway, King Bainas. She rise from her chair and said, Stop your blathering and bring me my dowry. Arnoa seeing a carriage said, I'm loving this king's carriage. She said while sitting inside that carriage, Maybe it's because it's made with my dowry. She said, It was delightful to watch them fight. Bainas holding his father-in-law's shirt shouts, You. You have been trying to kill the empress. I'm confiscating your assets. She said, trying to make each other pay more. Even then, he couldn't pay me back in full, so he had to give up the king's garage as well. Binas asked, Do you really have to take it from me? She said, You could pay me in gold. Binas said, Please take it, I enjoy walking. Bell said, So you're sparing the count, huh? He asked, Are you sure that's wise with everything he has done to you? Arnoa asked, Why does it matter? He will bother me no more. Bell said, That's generous of you. She leaned towards him and said I meant to ask. Will your duty be finished after you arrived at the Empire? Bell replied I suppose so. The new Empress has been chosen. Arnoa said Bell. Don't go back to the Enchanted Tower. Join me in the capital. He gets shocked and asks the capital? He said why would I go to the capital? Meanwhile he thoughts does she... Arnoa said, if you the Lord of Prahan and the Master of the Enchanted Tower are there, the nobles won't form a union and give me trouble. She said, people outside Prahan tend to shun sorcerers. But if you attend noble meeting as a lord, that might change. It's a win-win. Bell replied, it might be a win for you, but it's just bothersome to me. Arnoa said, I knew it. I won't twist your arm. Bell glares at her and said, you seem to know something of politics. Arnoa said, A little thanks to my mother, for an unknown reason. She said, Mother taught me many things, perhaps too many. Luciano considered me as a rival ever since mother taught me disciplines of kingship. Bell said, Anyway, I cannot stay in the capital. I must return to the tower. She asked, Is there something wrong with your domain? Suddenly she gets shocked and stops. She said, Oh, Oops. She recalls the moment when her mom said to her, Arnoa, Even the emperor can't meddle with affairs that happened in the domains of sorcerers. Remember, the masters of the enchanted tower have a nasty temper. She gets nervous and think, I forgot what mother's teachings. After spending some time with Bell, Bell said, That's a dangerous question you're asking. He moves closer to Arnoa and said, Does this mean you're not afraid of me anymore? Arnoa said, I'm in danger. Suddenly Bell starts smiling and said, You were terrified of me when we first met. Arnoa said while smiling, Sorry, I see Snowy when I see you now. Phew, he doesn't look angry. Bell said, Officially, my spirit form is a snow leopard. Even Anakin doesn't know what my spirit form is. She said, Must sorcerers have a scary spirit form? When they're actually just a cat and a raccoon? Bell tells her, my mother's spirit form was a fire dragon. She gets shocked and said, a fire dragon? Bell replied, yes. That's how the masters of the enchanted tower are supposed to be. An invincible force no one can challenge. Arnoa thinks, so the great sorcerer Amaryllis was a dragon. Somehow. I think I understand why she wanted her son's spirit form to be a cat. She smiled and said, I must say, a cat is cuter. Bell asked, cute you say? Arnoa said, yes. It's warm when I hug it. Bell glare hearing this. Suddenly he transform in a cat and said, meow. Arnoa gets shocked and said, hold on, Bell. You're not a real cat. You're a person. Bell comes closer to her and she touches him. Bell said, meow. She thinks... He's provoking me because I called him cute. She sighed and said, I thought you hated it when I doted on your cat form. She hugs him and think, many warned me about the evil masters of Enchanted Tower, but no one warned me about getting seduced. By a ball of soft fur. Meanwhile in the manor Baron Vent said, I wonder if he will arrive today. It has been weeks since I heard of the Emperor's passing. Where is the new Emperor? Duke Rickle asked, 
Have you heard any news from Duran? Marquis Duba replied, I should have but no. He said, It's been a month since Anakin Willow sent the messenger. But Duran is strangely quiet. I finished preparing early for nothing. Baron Vent asked, Did anyone else send a message to Duran? It's absurd they're staying so silent. When their king became the emperor. Countess Herman raised her hand and said, I did. She said, well, I tried to anyway. Baron Venn asked her, what do you mean? She replied, strangely, I couldn't even confirm if the message arrived at all. I'm still waiting for the reply. He asked, what was on your message? Marquis Dubit said, do you even have to ask? She must have sent her niece portrait. He said, a bold move, offering a mistress to the new emperor who didn't even arrive yet. She said, don't make a fuss. You must tame the emperor when he's still young and oblivious. Baron Vent folding his arms said, One might consider that a treason. If this emperor is dumb enough to fall for a honey trap, I'll just resign and return to my dominion. Marquis Dubert said, Broaden your sights. The new emperor is clueless. Someone has to take advantage of him. He said, I'm sure it's not just Countess Herman and I who are preparing to shower him with gold. He said, I already prepared the jewels to offer to the emperor. I even had the imperial palace decorated in Duran's colors so he can see it when he arrives. He said to her, good luck seducing him with a mistress. She starts laughing and said, the gold you generously offered will be used well by my niece who is going to the emperor's mistress. Marquis starts laughing hearing this and said, you don't know, do you? He tells, the new emperor, Duran's king, already has a mistress whom his majesty loves dearly. Everyone knows about this love story in Duran. She said, hmm. A mistress, huh? She said in a cold tone, maybe I shall have her killed. Marquis said, things will get complicated if she gives birth to his child. Haha, that is not a bad idea. No matter what we bribe him with when Grand Duke Asselier returns, your new emperor will soon become a mere figurehead. They both gives evil smile and she said, then we better make the most of this situation before he returns. He said, I'm glad we see eye to eye on this. He said to Rickle, you must be over the moon Duke Rickle. He gets confused hearing this. He asked him, about what might I ask? Marquis said, your niece became the imperial queen. He said, isn't it nice that the forgotten imperial princess has become the imperial queen? Just like her mother? No one will lock her in a tower now. Rickle said, like you said, it's nice. But as long as Grand Duke Asselier pulls the strings, it's all meaningless. Meanwhile, the door opens and Arnoa enters and everyone gets shocked seeing her. She steps forward saying, I see I'm a little late. Marquis gets shocked and asks, who are you? He shouts, this is a closed meeting. We don't take guests. She said, we met a few times when I was young. Have you forgotten me, Marquis Dubert? Marquis asked, pardon me? Meanwhile, Rickle gets shocked seeing her. Arnoa comes near the emperor's chair and touching it said, so you haven't heard? I see word travels slowly around here. She sits on the chair and they get shocked. Marquis said, huh? What are you? He shouts, how dare you? That seat is reserved for the emperor. Get off. She smiled and said, I am the new empress of the empire. Marquis shouts hearing this, nonsense. Duran's king is the new emperor. Arnoa said, oh that must be why the palace is overflowing with purple things. She picks the purple cushion and throw it on ground. Marquis gets panic and said, what are you doing? She waves her hand and said, I'm sick of purple things. Keep things like purple sapphires out of my sight, would you? Marquis gets furious and shouts, Enough. Reveal who you are right now. Arnoa asked, Not the smartest bunch, are you? She sighed and said, Did I not just say that I'm the new empress? She said, Bell, perhaps they need to hear it from you. Bell steps forward. He stand in front of them and announce, I am Belcherius, the master of the enchanted tower and a lord of Perhen. I just returned after fulfilling my duty as the messenger of the empire. Marquis asked him, Belcherius, is she telling the truth? Bell replied, she is. 
The empire has a new ruler, and her name is Anoa Saliard Cajun. Hearing this all of them get shocked. Bell said all hailed the empress. Baron asked Arnoa, The imperial princess? I didn't recognize your imperial majesty. It's the first time I'm seeing you since you went to Duke Rickles Manor. Marquis said, Hold on. To my knowledge, the marriage contract between Duran's king and your imperial majesty. Say that the king will receive the title of emperor. Why would your imperial highness become the empress? Did the king of Duran die or something? Arnoa said, he and I divorced a few days ago. That contract is now null and void. Hearing this Marquis and Countess gets shocked. Arnoa said, with Luciano and Arian under the ground. She smiled and said, I am the rightful heir to the throne. Arnoa said, I am still waiting for you to hail me. I am weary from the journey, so do make it quick. They all said, all hail the Empress? All hail the Empress. All hail the Empress. She thinks, it doesn't seem like I'm being welcomed. It doesn't surprise me. The nobles ignored me when I was young. Some even laughed as I, the imperial princess under the shadow of Luciano, got married off as if I was getting exiled from the empire. I didn't ask to be on the throne, but it's not that bad now that I'm on it. She noticing them shock thought, what matters now is that I'm here as the new empress. After some time Arnoa and Belle were standing in a room and Anakin comes and opens the door. Anakin comes in and said with a smile on his face, Noah. Seeing him Arnoa gets happy and said, Anakin. They both hugged each other. Arnoa giggled and said, why did you have to write the letter like that? Anakin laughed and said, would it kill you to say you miss me first? I thought of you every day. Meanwhile Belle standing there hearing them gets irritated. Arnoa said, it was the worst way to say that I should become the empress. Anakin said, I was worried the messenger boy might open the letter before you. It was a sort of safety device. I trust you, but him? Meh. He touches her face and said, but you got the message and became the new ruler. And returned to me. Arnoa said, I did, didn't I? Meanwhile Anakin hugs her. Arnoa said, let go of me. Anakin said, no, I haven't seen you in ages. Arnoa sighed, I know, it's just meanwhile Bell pulls her back. Bell gets furious and said, she said you should back off. Anakin said, long time no see, Bell. Do you also want to hug? Bell said, no, get the hell away from me. Arnoa standing between them asked, are you two really friends? Bell said, no, Anakin said, yes. Bell said in anger, I said I prefer being alone, but he latched on. Anakin said I took pity on this friendless troll and hung out with him at the academy. Arnoa said I can picture what happened. She stops them and said, okay, that's enough. Catch up on your own time. She said to Anakin, the more pressing matter at hand. Can you guess what it is, Anakin? Anakin kneeled in front of her and holding her hand said, just give me an order. Your Imperial Majesty. Arnoa said, Anakin Willow, I appoint you as my official advisor. Bell asked, Do you trust him? Arnoa replied, I do. He's an old friend. She said, Talented individuals like Anakin are extremely rare in the Empire. Anakin said, One might say the same of you. Your Imperial Majesty is truly one of a kind. Anakin kissed her hand and said, I swear allegiance to your imperial majesty only. Bell said, be careful. He griffed many people at the academy. Anakin said, me winning against you at checkers is not grifting. I won because I was good at it. And you were not. Bell said, did I tell you that he used to be a lone shark? People lost houses because of him. Anakin said, don't forget to mention that you used to absorb other people's mana and collect soul stones for fun. Arnoa stops them saying enough. I can see you both had a colorful life at the academy. She raised her hand and said to Bell, Bell, give me a moment to talk to him. Arnoa asked him, Anakin, how bad is the situation of the empire? He replied, it's downright awful. While Luciano was sick in bed, the nobles took control of most of the real power. 
Thus, the nobles are unlikely to submit properly to the new empress. Anakin said the ones who wield the most power Grand Duke Asselier and his daughter, Lady Roxanne Asselier, and they will come for you. Arnoa recalls the moment when she tries to defend Roxanne's horse, she said, she your sword. She said to Roxanne, this horse did its best and won second place. Roxanne pushed her and said, get out of my way. I have no use for a horse that gives me, Roxanne Asselier, second place. Saying this Roxanne hit her horse with her sword. Roxanne asked Arnoa, do you see how it's suffering in pain? She said, it's because you stopped me. Arnoa tells, Roxanne Asselier. Falling short of first place in a horse riding competition was reason enough for her to put her own horse down. She was much too cruel for a child of her age. He was just as bad as her father, who killed a soldier for not winning a spearmanship competition. Perhaps she was even worse. She kills people nowadays, just like her father. She still doesn't care for losing. Arnoa asked Anakin, then she should have returned victorious by now. Why is she camping in Kesman? Is there a reason for that? Anakin replied, Noah, don't act like you don't know why. Anakin said, there's no better excuse than a war to siphon the Empire's treasury. She's milking the war for all it's worth. Arnoa thinks, just as I thought. She said, Roxanne is like this sword of the Empire right now. The problem is that the sword keeps pointing the sharp end to its master. She must have been planning to make Arian the Emperor and play him like a fiddle. She will try to kill me when she hears the news. Anakin said, well, yes. She knows you are not her lapdog like Arian. All the more reason to clean the house before the Asselier arrive. She asked, how are the relationships among the nobles? Anakin said, as I said, downright awful. They despise and keep each other in check. They look down on the imperial family, but at the same time, they are desperate to make people from their families aides for the imperial family. She asked, you turned them against each other, didn't you? Anakin said, who else but little old me? Of course I did. He said, I did what I could to keep them from forming a union. But I'm afraid it won't be that way forever. When they start considering you as an enemy. It won't take long until they form an alliance, even if it's a temporary one. Arnoa said, so what you are saying is that I need to bring at least one person to my side before that, right? Arnoa said, then tell me. Which family is powerful enough to stand against the Grand Duke and is likely to stand by my side as well? Anakin said, there is only one family and you know it. Arnoa said, accept them. Anakin waving his hand said, there is no one else. She said, think harder. Anakin said, who do you think would be able to restrain the Grand Duke? Do you know of the North, besides Duke Rickle, the Sovereign of the South? Arnoa said, how about Baron Vent? Anakin replied, he's relatively loyal and strong, but his family is small. He wouldn't risk bringing his family to ruin for loyalty. Arnoa said, there's also Countess Herman. Anakin said, she detests losses. She wouldn't lift a finger unless she was sure she would benefit from aiding you. Arnoa gets confused and said ha. Huh. She thinks, would Duke Rickle agree to be on my side? She recalls the moment when guards were taking her to the tower, and she shouts, Uncle. You know me. I would never do such a thing. Uncle. Uncle. Arnoa said to Anakin, get me a meeting with him. She said, go tell him I'm on my way. Anakin bowed and said, as you wish. Anakin turns toward Bell and said, and aren't you done here? Go home. Bell said, so this is what you were worried about back in the carriage. Are you planning on making the duke your ally? Arnoa replied, I have no other choice since you turned me down. Bell said, does that mean I'm your first choice? Arnoa said, if I said yes, would you stay? Bell rised and said, no. Like Anakin said, I'm done here. I'm going home. Arnoa said, it's a shame. I knew you would say that. Bell said, however. She gets shocked. Bell holds her hairs and said, I'm planning on returning soon. He smiled and said, the capital is more fun than I thought. Arnoa went to her uncle who was drinking tea. He gets shocked seeing her. 
he bowed and said, Your Imperial Majesty. Arnoa said, It's been a while, Duke Rickle. Please have a seat. They both sits on a table and Arnoa said, Consider what happened her uncle said, in the past. She said, Forgiven? Her uncle said, Forgotten? Suddenly they both gets shocked hearing each other. Her uncle said, Forgiven? I believe our family has never wronged you, your majesty. Arnoa shouts, Are you saying handing me over to Luciano just because he asked didn't make you feel sorry for me at all? She said, Three years ago, after Luciano's coronation, you served me up to him on a silver platter when he said he would interrogate me for plotting treason. I may not be a rickle, but I am your sister's daughter. She shouts, No one in his right mind would send off their niece to die just like that. Her uncle replied, It was the late emperor who forced ill fate upon you, not me, your imperial majesty. He said I did my best at the time. She slammed her hand on table. She asked in a cold tone, Your best? Did you just say you did your best? Her uncle replied, Yes, I did. He said, I did my best to make your imperial majesty stay at my manor, as comfortable as possible. Arnoa thinks, during the time between Impress M. Nastia's death and Luciano's order to have me taken away, I live as a guest with my mother's relatives, Duke Rickle's family. It was clear that they never thought of me as their family. Everyone was always so polite and treated me like I was made of glass. They never expressed malice towards me or treated me poorly. It was me who had false hope. She thinks, I took out my anger on the wrong person. He is indeed not at fault. Ever for the Sovereign of the South, it would have been Diffy the Imperial's order. Not only that I was charged with treason. If Duke Rickle have protected me, House Rickle would have been changed with treason as well. She thinks, even so, I can't help but feel betrayed to some extent. Arnoa said, if you really aimed to do your best, you could have at least told me where I was being taken to. Her uncle said, I couldn't the late emperor had forbidden me to. She said, I see. I understand. Arnoa cluelessly asked him, by the way, what did you mean by forgetting about the past? Hearing this her uncle gets shocked and asked, isn't it obvious? You have appointed Anakin Willow the most talented son of House Willow, as your advisor and took him away, being fully aware that House Willow is a vassal of House Rickle. Anakin said to him, when he was there to tell about the meeting, as the imperial advisor, I am here to request a meeting on behalf of the Empress. Hearing this he gets shocked. Her uncle starts shaking and said, I have been investing in House Willow for ages. If it had not been for your imperial majesty, Anakin would have become my advisor instead. He said, You of all people should be aware that House Rickle highly values talent. Your Imperial Majesty has taken the most valuable asset of my family and the greatest genius in the Empire. She said, Did you really think I would not resent you for it? Of course I know what House Rickle value the most. She thinks, My mother taught me that. Remember Noah. Wherever you go, Seek just one person who has the greatest potential to be your aid. And give that person all of your trust and affection, so that they would even risk their live for you if so desired. She thinks I took her words to heart and tried my best when choosing my aides. Dr. Ludes and Anakin are great example of that. She thinks I can see why the Duke is mad. He's been investing in Anakin and I just took him away. Her uncle picking the cup of tea said, that being said, she gets shocked. He said, I suppose it is my fault as well. I failed to make my house attractive enough for a genius like him so I will put this behind me. She thinks, perhaps, neither of us is in a position to blame each other. She said, Duke Rickle. She said, I have a proposition. Changing scenes we saw Roxanne shouting, damn it, damn it to hell. The guards whispers in each other's ears, not a day goes by without that her breaking something. I was surprised she was agreed to the request of Kessman to halt the battle during the harvest season. I just hope she doesn't take it out in us. Her dad comes and said, calm down, Roxanne. Roxanne replied, calm down? She said, do you seriously expect me to calm down when the throne was been usurped by a thief? 
She throws her sword in anger and said, Ha! Imperial Princess Anoa as the Empress? What a sick joke! Her father said, getting upset wouldn't change what happened. Roxanne said, Are you saying that I am just throwing tantrum? Her father said, Of course not, my daughter I meant she interrupts him saying, It's been over a month since Luciano died. She steps towards him and said, House Asselier is supposed to be the real master of the continent. She gets furious and said, So tell me why it took us this long to find out who the next empress is? She said, What the hell happened? What caused the late coronation? Why was her divorce right before that? Her father said, It was not our fault. If anyone is to blame, it's that idiot, Duran's king. He apparently divorced an imperial princess to be with his mistress. Without knowing might have become the emperor. Roxanne said in anger, I refuse to believe that such a moron exits in this world. Her father said, yes, it was hard to believe for me as well. He even had to return all of his former queen's dowry, including the jewelry of Empress Anastia. Roxanne asked her father, who are we up against? Her father replied, you said it yourself, he is a moron. Roxanne said, I meant the Empress. Her father replied, don't worry, she is painfully ordinary. Roxanne said to her father, please elaborate. Her father said, she was to the imperial family, but she couldn't even get education properly since her mother died early. She let a weakling Ike Luciano abuse her, and she even let that moron of Duran and his mistress walk all over her. The hardest thing she went through in her life is her divorce. Roxanne said, she was basically a punching bag. The throne deserved better. Roxanne thinks, that's what became of Empress Anarsha's daughter? She thinks, wasn't she more alike? Her father interrupts her saying, in other words, she will make a better puppet than Arian. Roxanne said, that let us send a warning. She steps on her sword and said, a warning more direct than what we sent to Duran's king. She gives an evil smile and said the empress will kneel before House Asselier or die. In the next scene a man said, so the princess, no, the empress returned to the empire after getting a divorce? She did. Duran's king, who adores his mistress, declared our divorce with her imperial majesty soon after, the late emperor passed away. Marquis said he gave up the chance to have the entire continent for a mistress, huh? I must say, that was the most idiotic move in history. A man said, he must not have known. I heard he got sick from crying too much. Marquis said, I can't believe such a moron exists on the continent. He said, does that mean our new empress came to power because she got divorced? Someone said, she was the youngest among three siblings, she lost her mother early. She probably doesn't know much about politics. She would have to depend on us, the nobles, then. He said, I shall see if I can get one of my people to become her aide. Baron said, I don't know. She didn't seem that naive to me. The man said, you won't fool me. You say that, but I know you are just trying to beat me to it. Baron said, I'm not. Meanwhile, Arnoa enters and someone saw it. The Empress has come. They all bowed and said, your Imperial Majesty. Arnoa said, thank you for your warm welcome. Have a seat. They thinks, so she is the new Empress. Actually, unlike the rumors. She doesn't look naive at all. Arnoa said, I am grateful to all of you who have been keeping the troubled empire together until now. Let us begin the meeting. I believe there is an issue about the valve with Kessman. Maquis thinks seeing her, she is jumping right at it. Marquis said, so suddenly, your imperial majesty? Arnoa asked, are you not prepared? You who reported it, was it not? Marquis said, it was me, indeed. He thinks, I was planning to ease into it, but here we go. Marquis said, currently, Grand Duke Asselier is engaged in fierce battles alongside the Grand Duchess against the Kingdom of Kesman. Not so long ago, there was even the tragedy of the special force, organized by the Grand Duke being annihilated by the enemy. Arnoa said, ah, yes. The unit made of Duranians. He thinks, how does she know that? He said, and as you well know, funds are needed to overcome such adversities. 
she asked, did the Grand Duke request funds from the Empire again? According to the record it's the third time this year. Marquis said, it has been a difficult war, she interrupts him saying, difficult, is it? Even with ten times more soldiers than Kesman? She said, the Kesmanian army must be quite formidable. He thinks, did she just mock the Grand Duke? He said, Kesman has rugged terrain that allows the Kesmanian to have an advantage in battles. She sighed and said, to my knowledge, the military funds allocated for this year have all been depleted by the last request. How would the Empire raise funds on such short notice? Marquis said, oh, there is nothing to be worried about, your Imperial Majesty. He said, the funds requested by the Grand Duke and the Grand Duchess are actually not as much as you might think. He even specified when and how to obtain the funds. He said your imperial majesty's dowry that was returned after your divorce would suffice. It was a carriage filled with gold and a pair of black diamonds, was it not? Arnoa thinks, wow. He wants me to hand over the dowry I got back in the name of military funds? The dowry someone brings to their marriage belongs only to them. No one can take it away as its private property. Even a husband must return it when he gets a divorce. Asking to hand that over means that he is blatantly asking for my obedience to him, the army commander of the empire. Marquis said, I know it must be offensive, your imperial majesty, but you must swallow your pride. Look at the bigger picture. Had the Grand Duke and the Grand Duchess not defended the north, the empire might have already collapsed. There is no one who can replace the Grand Duke as the army commander. He said, if your imperial majesty knew the significance of this war, you would accept the grand duke's request. She thinks, the man sure has a silver tongue. She said, I understand. The late emperor did leave the war effort solely to the grand duke. Marquis laughed and said, exactly. You should show your gratitude to the grand duke. By offering him your private property as the military funds. She interrupts him saying, is there anyone who is against this idea? Marquis gets confused and said, Pardon? Against you say. She said, Would a peace treaty not be better than prolonging a war with an uncertain end? Nori said, Your imperial majesty must not know what the empire has gone through lately. She said, Sir Nori. Nori said, Although we are currently in a year-long stalemate, the Grand Duke and the Grand Duchess have saved the empire from the crisis of collapse several times. She thinks, a crisis of collapse, he says. The Cajun Empire that practically spans the entire continent. Marquis said, he speaks truth the Grand Duke is the savior of the empire. Moreover, the fiancé of the Grand Duchess recently perished in a battle against the enemy, so there should also be compensation as consolation for her loss. He said, in fact, I'm not sure the return dowry alone is enough. Nore said, I agree. She thinks, so this is how they want to play it, huh? She said, I've heard enough. Marquis asked, should we go fetch the carriage? She said, no. She said, like you said, I still am clueless about the recent situation of the empire. Marquis asked, then why not just do as we advised? She replied, no. Let's put a pin in that for now. She said, I am not ignoring your advice. I understand what you want me to do very well. They get shocked hearing this. She said, and I need some time to think about it. They smirked and think, she'll do as we say in the end. There is no way she can defy the Grand Duke. All she can do is to reject a few times to save face. She said, as for this matter, I will decide what to do in the next meeting after giving it due consideration. She said to Anakin, you can write a letter to me if you have any opinions until then. Let us conclude the meeting. Anakin said to her while walking, Your Majesty, allow me to take you to the audience chamber. She turns and said, Let's go. She said to her uncle when she visited him, Duke Rickle, I have a proposition. He asked, A proposition? For me? She said, I know that Rickle never betrayed their own family. It's one of the things my mother taught me. She said, My mother was a Rickle, yet I carry Cajun's name. I understand that is why it is hard for you to accept me as a member of House Rickle. That must also be the reason why you are reluctant to stand by my side immediately. 
so I wish to propose something to you. Meanwhile a girl wearing a blue dress comes and said, Your Imperial Majesty. Penelope Rickle, at your service. Seeing her Arnoa said, It's good to see you again, Penelope. It's been three years. Arnoa said, Penelope? But she remained silent. Arnoa said with a smile on her face, Penelope, didn't you miss me? Penelope starts crying and hugged her saying, Your Majesty. Arnoa tells, Penelope was the only one at Duke Rickles Manor who talked to me. She recalls the moment when Penelope giving her teddy to Arnoa said, Play with Penny, Noah. Arnoa replied, I am an imperial princess, you shall dress me as, your highness. Penelope said, Play with Penny, your highness. Arnoa said, I meant you should be more respectful. Penelope pulls her saying, Come on, your highness. Arnoa tells, Penelope only had two elder brothers. Maybe that's why she considered me as her sister and asked me to play with her relentlessly. She has still liked me even after she became a teenager. And when I was forcefully sent to the Imperial Palace. Meanwhile Penelope said I was thrilled when I heard your majesty asked for me. Arnoa replied with a smile on her face, it's so nice to see you again. Arnoa thinks she is like the sister I never had. I wouldn't have blamed you even if you changed your attitude towards me after so many years. But here you are, still giving me a warm welcome. I was right to call for you. Arnoa said, you can call me Noah when we are alone. Penelope replied, but my father told me that specifically not to do that. Arnoa said, you have grown up. Good, that's how lady-in-waiting should be. Penelope hesitated hearing this and said, a lady-in-waiting. Arnoa said, don't you want to be one? You are free to return if you don't. Penelope gets shocked and said, I do. I am happy to do your majesty's lady-in-waiting. Arnoa said, but... Penelope holding her hand said, I understand that your imperial majesty offered to make me serve you to form an alliance with House Rickle. But that's not enough for people to think the Rickles and the imperial family have a true alliance. It's too late. Your Majesty seek other noble houses of power to form an alliance with. Arnoa thinks hearing this, Duke Rickel also pointed that out. She recalls the moment when she met Duke Rickel, he said, I see. Your Majesty want to be a family with House Rickel. It's an honor that your Imperial Majesty wants Penelope as your lady-in-waiting, but I am afraid that it's not enough to call ourselves family. Arnoa said, then let me show you. Just how much trust one put in House Rickel. She thinks, also an alliance was not the sole purpose of my offer, she said, Penelope. She thinks, no lady-in-waiting other than her will worry about things such as whom I form an alliance with. Arnoa says, there's not a single noblewoman I trust more than you. She said, you should focus on your own future rather than worry about such things, as a lady-in-waiting should. Arnoa turns and asks, is there anything you want for your future? Penelope asked, for my future? They sit on sofa and Arnoa asked, Is it a marriage or a title you seek? A lady-in-waiting of the Empress can have it all. Penelope said, actually, I am interested in neither of those. Hearing this Arnoa gets shocked. Penelope said, I want to be at the center of high society. As the late Empress Anastia, who was called the treasure of the empire, once was. Her imperial majesty was famous for her tremendous power and wealth but I have heard her with and charm were so impressive that they remain memorable even after her passing. It's said that her imperial majesty was able to prevent a war with just her eloquence. Penelope said I want to be like her. Arnoa said I think I can help you with that. Penelope have you had a debutante ball yet? She replied no your majesty. Arnoa comes near to her and said let me throw a glamorous, beautiful ball for you. Right here in the Imperial Palace. In the next scene we saw Penelope's debutante ball event. Everyone seeing Penelope gets shocked. Anakin said to Arnoa, The first event after your accession should have been for your coronation, not Lady Penelope's debutante ball. Are you sure this is the theme of the ball you want, Your Majesty? She replied, I am. The people have gathered. Haven't they? Anakin sighed and asked, A ball prepared for a lady-in-waiting? 
Who benefits from this? Our Noah seems to be happy, said, follow the people's gaze. At this mind-blowingly lavish and overwhelmingly luxurious party, the debutante is commanding all the attention in the center of the hall. A lady from audience said, A debutante ball at the Imperial Palace? I am dying of jealousy. The other lady said, Lady Penelope's dress is absolutely fabulous, too. Meanwhile our Noah drinking Jews said to Anakin, Did you hear that? They think highly of Penelope. Hence, I am benefiting. And the finale hasn't even started he he. Anakin asked, Do you think this plan will work? Our Noah replied, I had your help with the plan. The chance of it filing is slim. Anakin asked, But if it fails? Our Noah lifting a cupcake replied, Well. She smiled and said, I shall still be giving my beloved cousin a gift. A man said, What a grand ball. I guess coming from House Rickle has its benefits. A lady in red dress said, I don't know. Her Imperial Majesty still doesn't have her people at the Imperial Palace. She said, My mother said this was just a means for the Empress to demonstrate to people how well she treats her only lady-in-waiting. The man said, Maybe her Imperial Majesty is trying to get House Rickle to side with her completely. The lady said, That's a silly notion. The man asked, Why is that a silly notion? She replied, it will take more than lavish ball or an expensive dress to persuade Duke Rickle. Her treasury is so full that even the cutlery at his manor is all made of gold. Duke Rickle wouldn't bat SNI even if she dressed, spoke, and behaved. Exactly like the late Empress to evoke his memory. After all, she's not the late Empress. If all she can offer to win the favor of the Sovereign of the South is a mere fancy ball, then that's her limits as the former queen of the small realm of Duran. Ha ha. That is true. Meanwhile our Noah opening a box said, Shall we begin? Anastia, the former head of House Rickle and the leader of high society. The Emperor Galilean Pelace Cajun, my father, gifted Anastia a pair of black diamonds when he asked her to be his second queen. Despite showing little interest in rubies as red as blood or emeralds as vivid as life. She was fond of black gems, and he knew just the thing to captivate her. A pair of black diamonds that sparkle, as if they held the depths of the night sea, and the luminous stars of the universe. You will become the treasure of the empire. I wish to give you the most beautiful thing in my possession. This incident became such a romantic tale that it made black gems a trend across the entire empire. Our Noah comes in center of the hall and lift her hand in air. She said, Penelope, my sister whom I adore, is the banquet to your liking? Penelope bowed and said, Of course, your imperial majesty. You held it just for me. I will serve your majesty with all my heart as your lady-in-waiting. Our Noah said, Raise your head, Penelope. She gets shocked and said, Your majesty? Arnoa said, I held this banquet as your sister and not as the empress. So today, she said, I wish to see you happy as my sister and not as my lady-in-waiting. Penelope gets happy hearing this and said, Thank you, you imperial majesty. Arnoa said, Penelope, I have prepared a gift to bless your future. She opens the box of a black gem necklace and said, You will become the treasure of the empire. I wish to give to you the most beautiful thing in my possession. Hearing this everyone gets shocked and starts whispering. A lady said, I remember that phrase. It was, a man said, that color, that size, it must be the late empress's. My goodness. A lady said, I thought her imperial majesty would wear it herself. Seeing this all Duke Rickle gets emotional standing behind the crowd. Countess said, my, my, a bold move. She just gifted her cousin the reputation that was once carried by the late empress and the legacy of her mother. Even a real sister wouldn't be so generous. She said, Congratulations, Duke Rickle. Whether you want it or not, your daughter now inherited Empress Anastia's name. Arnoa said, joining Imperial family and House Rickle once more. Then let me show you. Just how much trust one put in House Rickle. As long as Penelope carries the name of the treasure of the empire, the epitaph of Anastia, 
no one will separate the imperial family from House Rickle in their thoughts. The countess said I thought the banquet was just a shallow plan to gain favor. For someone who was ignored even in a small kingdom, she sure made my remarkable move. Duke Rickle smiled and said she's crafty. Just like my sister used to be. Penelope said to Arnoa, I'm so happy, your majesty. Arnoa smiled and thought, with this, Penelope will now become the successor of Anastia Rickle with that kind of title. It will be much easier for her to rise to the top of high society. Arnoa asked her, have you picked your next dance partner yet? Penelope shaked her head and said, no, your majesty. Arnoa said, I see, Anna can dance with her. Will you? They both get shocked and Anakin said, Why me? Huh? Arnoa said, Don't you see men over there eager to be her next dance partner? If she dances with the wrong person when she's at the center of attention, people might mistake the partner for one of my people. We can't have that today, at least not now. They both said, As you wish, your majesty. Anakin gets closer to Arnoa and whisper, But promise me that your majesty will let me dance with you when I return. Arnoa smiled and said, If I must. Anakin and Penelope starts their dance. Arnoa said to Chamberlain, Lord Chamberlain? He replied, Yes, your imperial majesty. Arnoa said, I'm going to take a walk in the gardens. Let the musicians play whatever they want to. He said, Of course, your majesty. Arnoa comes outside and sits in garden. She said, Ha! Huh? My legs hurt from standing for too long. She thinks, Doesn't your majesty think it's a shame? She recalls a moment when she said to Anakin holding the black gem box, HM? What do you mean? Anakin replied, Your majesty didn't have a debutante ball either. You had no one celebrates you. I wish the first event would honor your majesty. She thinks, the boat has sailed. There's no point in having regrets now. She said, regrets will only hold me back. Huh. Meanwhile, Belle comes in cat form and said, meow. Seeing her, she said, oh. Arnoa hugs her and said, Snowy, you got cuter. Come here. Belle comes in his original form and said, would you stop hugging me already? Arnoa said, it was Snowy I was hugging, not you. Belle said, don't act so disappointed. She sighed and said, I thought you'd be at the Enchanted Tower. Belle said, I told you I'd return. Belle moves his hand forward. She gets confused and said, what are you doing? Belle said, isn't dancing a thing at debutante balls? She starts laughing and said, well, it's not my debutante ball. Belle holding her hand said, HM, I don't care. He hugs her and said, I came to see the Empress. In the next scene, Bell comes back to his home using a portal. Seeing him, Luca said, oh, you're back. Luca said, I told you that you should come back early because the portal closes at midnight. It was this close to closing. Bell said, and I told you multiple times that you don't have to wash fruits grown with magic because they're clean. Luca said, all food must be clean before eating. Bell said, I've never seen a sorcerer who's more affected by their spirit form than you, Luca. Luca said, anyway, how was the ball? Bell replied, the ball was. He said, people were drinking and dancing on the other side, but in the gardens, it was like we were the only ones left on earth. The beautiful gardens and the sound of nature all faded away, and the only thing I could sense was Arnoa's presence. Bell said, enjoyable. Lucas said, I see you have put my teachings to use. It was worth it to sneak into the classroom in the Imperial Palace to teach you how to dance. Bell said, or you could have just paid the fee and learned dancing there in human form. Luca transformed in his body and said, I'm so proud. I knew it'd help. Bell said, you don't dance as well as I thought. Luca said, excuse me? Bell said, the Empress had a more upright posture and she didn't wobble like you do. Hearing this he Luca gets shocked. Luca said she grew up with Anakin Willow. The man has the most elegant footwork in the empire. Bell thinks he does. Luca said he danced so well, no sorcerers turned him down when he seduced them with his moves back in the Academy of Magic. 
Hadn't you heard? Of course she dances well. She grew up with him. Lucas said, well, I taught you well enough to dance with ease, didn't I? Belle said, it wasn't easy. Luca gets shocked and said it wasn't. It was fun, but so tiring as well. Belle glares at him and said, why didn't you tell me that your heart beats faster when you dance? Luca asked, what are you talking about? Belle said, you should have given me a heads up if the exercise could strain my body. Luca said, how can dancing strain your body? Even poisons do nothing to your body. You were fine when you danced with me. Luca said, maybe the body enchantment magic the dark lady cast on you has worn off. Bell said, would you stop calling my mother? The dark lady. Luca said, I heard people called her that back in the day. Should I address her as? The cannibalistic dragon. Instead? Bell said, just shut your mouth. Luca hesitated and said, Master, I was waiting for the right time to tell you this. But the fifth child of House Layton had a seizure again. Bell said, It's the fifth time this year. Luca said, Will you give the same treatment as the last time? Bell replied, Yes. I don't have a proper cure. The parents would want me to as well. Luca said, You said that there might be a cure. That a soul stone of a member of the imperial family might do the trick. Bell said, Luca. Luca said, The Empress is the only member of the imperial family you have access to right now. Maybe you should try her again. Bell again said in anger, Luca. Luca said, She was willing to offer her soul stone for a wager. That means she's not too eager to live. If you could persuade her somehow to give up half of her life. Bell gets furious hearing him. Bell attacked him, saying, I'm warning you, Luca. If you speak of the Empress in that manner ever again, I will flay your skin and make a rug for her. Bell asked, Do you understand? Luca said, I understand. I will never tell you to get the Empress's soul stone again. Bell leaves him, and Luca said, I'm just a feeble raccoon. You mean it. Bell turns back and said, We're going to the Leightons. He said, I'll see if I can find a clue to the cure once I get there. Changing scene, Sarnoa said, You are genius, Anakin. Anakin, helping her to remove her shoes, said, It was your majesty's idea to make Lady Penelope the successor of Anastia. Arnoa laying on bed said, It was you who said we should use the phrases my father said to my mother. It was also you who found out what the phrases were, and how to play it to the nobles. Arnoa asked, Did Duke Rickle leave me any messages before he left? He said, No, he left soon after the ball ended. He said, but I did encounter Lord Damien. She said, he's Penelope's eldest brother. The second son, Balan, must have been there too. Anakin said, he said he was surprised, but he seemed to be proud of Lady Penelope. He asked me to convey his regards to your majesty. Arnoa said, that must mean the duke was pleased. I'm done for today. Anakin said, I'm afraid you have one more task. He leans on her and said, your majesty still owes me a dance. Arnoa said, sorry, I forgot after I went out to the gardens. He said, how could you? I was waiting for you while dancing with Lady Penelope against my will. He said, was dancing with Belle instead of me fun for you, your majesty? She said, he is a strange one. He showed up without being invited and left when I asked him to stay. He's like, he said, a cat? She gets shocked hearing this and thinks, does Anakin know Bell's real spirit form? Anakin said, his spirit form is a snow leopard, though. She said, yes, it is. She thinks he doesn't know. Good for Bell for hiding it. Anakin said, I advise you not to get involved too deeply with the master of the enchanted tower. He is unpredictable. You don't know what will trigger him to turn against your majesty and cause great harm. She thinks, I understand why Anakin is warning me. I've seen Bell kill people without even batting an eye many times. But every time he killed someone, he did it to protect me. It's true that he is whimsical. But Bell is. She said, I should prepare for tomorrow's meeting. She smiled and said, let's think of a way to show Marquis Dubert who holds the power. Anakin said, I've been waiting for you to say that. 